Hello, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Business Central. The first page that I'm starting on is the role centre and you can see here that I have a role centre. Um, today I'm logged in as a business manager, so it's giving me a number of pieces of information regarding my business and today the biggest sales order and in a minute it will change <clears throat> and give us some more information. Further down, I've got some queues going on, so it's telling me what my sales were, my overdue invoices, my purchasing, and I've got some little tiles which are called queues, which tell me that I've got 48 sales orders, I've got four invoices, 24 purchase orders, and so on, and also my payment information. These role centres are, as the, as the name suggests, based on the role that you have in the business. So as a business owner, I've got some very different pieces of information. <clears throat> I've got my cash accounts looking here at my general ledger. I've got my top chem customers showing. I've got some uh, values by customer name. I've got trial balance going on. So uh, there's all sorts of elements on this role centre. Um, I have a, another role centre, which is a sales order processing clerk. So as you can see, it's very different from the point of view. So the menus across the top are different. The tiles are different. The queues are different as well. So here I'm looking at sales orders. I'm looking at partially shipped and delayed and so on. And so it's telling me here by the different colours of the tiles that um, I need to pay attention. Here I've got 13 sales orders that are delayed. I've got 26 open sales orders here. So you know what is going on as a sales order processing clerk or supervisor? It's alerting me to the fact that I have all of these orders here. So when I click the tile, it takes me back to the uh, to the information underneath. Um, the little dots here take me into the back door and it allows me to show you the uh, capacity and capabilities of the system. Um, so uh, we're talking here about the essentials license, so it doesn't include manufacturing and it doesn't include service management. That is the premium license and not covered by the ABC offering. So what we have here is um, company information. We have the usual, usual uh, administrative type IT functions to set up users and workflows and things. <clears throat> but then when we look at something like finance, you can see uh, with the numbers against, we've got lots of different functionality. So when I click on the general ledger, it opens up a menu um, so that it's showing me chart of accounts and budgets and account schedules, which is a management reporting tool, intercompany consolidation journals, all the things that you would expect to see related to a general ledger. Obviously here I've also got, because it's under finance, I've got receivables and payables. So under receivables, we've got creating customers, invoices, credit notes, we've got um, journals, we've got the posted documents, we've got reports, and we've got set up. So behind the scenes here, this is uh, basically all of the functionality. So as I say, under finance, we've got the general ledger. This is where the cash, the bank account, the currency is. Receivables, as we've just seen, is sales ledger, payables, purchase ledger. There is a fixed asset ledger, so much more than just a register. You can have multiple assets, multiple books of depreciation, multiple methods of depreciation, um, all fully integrated with the general ledger for calculating um, depreciation on a monthly basis and also integrated with sales and purchases for buying and selling assets. There is obviously stock control in inventory and there is all sorts of uh, supply chain facilities in here to allow you to order, restock, replen, min max, all of those sorts of uh, criteria against invoicing. Under purchasing, we have um, a whole obviously things like purchase um, with the suppliers and purchase orders, etc. Blanket purchase orders are the same as sales purchase orders, are call off orders. Um, but also we've got um, other elements in here under planning, so the requisition worksheet is a planning um, a planning engine, very much like a, uh, a, a an MRP type engine that allows you to decide what you need to um, buy, uh, which what you need to purchase. It's also used for back to back, so you can raise a sales order and back that sales order straight off against a purchase order. There's a number of ways of doing that. The requisition worksheet is one of them. So obviously under purchasing and planning, so there is a whole world of uh, technology. Within warehousing, um, we have layers and layers of warehousing. Simple um, warehousing is with inventory picks and putaways. Um, you can run 
pick and put away worksheets or you can actually just go in and generate an inventory pick or an, an inventory put away. Um, so there are a whole raft of pieces of functionality uh, in here right the way up to um, full warehouse management. So zones and bins and um, stock takes, revaluation journals, reclassification journals. So a lot of functionality within warehousing. You'll also notice there that we have assembly orders. So within assembly orders, um, so this is included in the essentials license, not manufacturing, it's kitting or assembly as it says. So we have a, a low level bill of materials which can have multiple levels and we can also add a resource to that to enable you to have the labour costs included in that bill of materials. Over here on sales and marketing, as you might expect, we've obviously in order processing got customers and contacts because you can start life as a contact before they become a customer and raise a sales quote against a contact. And then we have orders, call off orders, returns, invoices, credit notes, exactly as you would expect. Uh, and all the posted information and um, uh, and uh, day books, et cetera, from that point of view. So there is within the system, obviously, all of the ledgers. There is order processing, there is stock control, there is all of the finance functionality, there's layers of warehousing, um, there is also jobs, so jobs or projects, so that we can have a job set up. Uh, there are timesheets related to those jobs, it calculates WIP and posts it through to the GL. Um, again, individual jobs or a batch job, and the sales invoicing is done through the jobs. Obviously, job journals for people to post costs is linked through to purchase order processing. So there is a whole world in there re related to jobs. Uh, I've just touched on resources. So if you were using jobs or if you were using assembly bills of material, you can set up resources with all of their um, cost and selling prices as well. So a fully comprehensive ERP system. So I'm just going to show you a few elements about how the system works. So when I look at my customer list here, I've got a list of customers. I've got various columns on here that I can personalize. So under the personalize, it allows me to uh, change the columns, hide them. So when I click on this little arrowhead, I can set freeze panes, I can move the columns, I can hide the columns. So if I wanted to have my, if I wanted to hide the phone number because I haven't got any, I just literally click on the button and hide it and that goes away. But maybe there's some other columns that I actually want. So the add field button at the top here brings down the field number, the field list that I can add in this, uh, in this scenario. So let's add the location code. So here's the location code. I grab it and I drop it where I want it to appear, and there it is. Once I've completed all my changes, I can obviously move things around, etc., depending on what I'm looking to do. Once I've done everything, I just click the Done button, and that is all completed and ready to use. So the next thing I'd like to show you is the search button here. So this search button here, if I search for, if I just put in C-A-N in there, it's doing two elements. It's doing a search, a context sensitive search, not a, um, it's not taking into account case sensitivity or positioning in the string of text that we're looking at. So obviously here they found CAN at the beginning, but also in the second word on, on this one, they found it in the second word here. They found it in the second word and so on. Um, and as you can see, this is capitalized, but I haven't done a capitalized. So when you're using search, it's searching across all of the information that you can actually see. So if I searched here for, um, let's search for Andy. Yeah, so it's found uh, Andy in the contact. Yeah, so it's looking at any of this information that we're looking at here. So very powerful search. You don't have to sit in the field and, uh, and choose it. Under this button here is the filter pane. Um, so basically I can add different filters on here. So um, I might want to filter the list by, and as you see here, the visible fields are the columns that I am showing. So here I've got salesperson, currency, phone number, which map obviously exactly across the top here. So if I want to uh, filter by salesperson, I choose the salesperson and then I choose the salesperson who I want to filter by. So here I've got a list purely of JR's customers. 
Now I can layer these filters on. So if I now want to filter by currency code and I want to choose euros, exactly the same process. I choose the field that I want and then I choose the value that I want to filter by. So now I've got a, a, a list of uh, JR's customers who are um, using the euro currency. I could go on and layer on um, more and more uh, filters so that I get down maybe by um, by location code or whatever. But what I want to do now is actually I want to push this into Excel. So a very quick and easy way of generating a report. And basically I can send this uh, report out by email if that's what I want to do to, uh, to, to JR so that he's got a list of his customers. Um, I chose the option um, open in Excel and that's exactly what it's done. So basically it's taken a list exactly as what's on the screen and it's taken, uh, it's put on the, um, the, the data sorts and filters for us. And as you can see, I'm filtered by euros, I'm filtered by JR, and then I have all the rest of the information on my screen. There is There was an option uh, there to edit in Excel and I'll cover that in another session. Um, what I can also do is I can put some um, some simple criteria. So if I say I want a balance that is greater than zero. So now I've got three filters on here looking at euros, looking at JR's customers and looking at those customers who have a balance greater than zero. And as you can see here, um, as you can see the little icon in the heading, these are the columns that we've got filters on. So if I close this panel, you don't lose anything um, and you can see all of these balances are greater than zero. The other thing that I wanted to show you here is when I add a filter, we have the visible columns, but I also have the available fields. So even though I can't see the field, I can still use it. So it could be that I want to filter on a particular um, type of customer. It might be uh, a, a different grouping that I want. So maybe a price group or a posting group. So it could be a number of things that I wanted to filter on that I haven't got the column showing. Um, on the system that I can then use. So as you can see, there's a lot more information underneath here that I could actually uh, filter on. What I can also do, as you can see here, is I can save this filter. So if this is something that I want to do on a regular basis, then I can save this filter. And here I've already done one, which is the balance is greater than zero and they're in the yellow location. So from that point of view, I could save this filter, call it something, and then basically I can just apply it every time I want to use it. To take these filters off, um, I can literally just hit the crosshatch and that's now taken off the filter for um, the currency. So you can see we've got different currencies. And if I want to take off the filter for the salesperson, so now I've got all different salespeople, but I've still got the balance greater than zero. So I've got nobody here with a zero balance. So uh, it depends on what I'm trying to do uh, with my filtering, etc. So that is searching and filtering and how we uh, how we navigate around the system.